So nice to see you, nice Cinema to see you too. I'm going to play a couple of tunes for you first, if that's okay. Oh, yes, please. Um, uh, we're going to go with Fame by David Bowie, because oh, it's a Foxcatcher. Amazing. Uh, and then we're going to go with Ordinary World by Duran Duran, because it's in Layer Cake, if that's okay. Was it? It was. Yeah. I love that song. Good. I'm glad you like our choices. Oh, perfect. Do you want to pick one? Um, off the top of my Anything head. Anything you want. <gasps> Um, I would have done David Bowie, but that's happened. So <laughs> I'm gonna go. Can I think? Can we ask? Yeah, you we end? can ask you later. In the meantime, we'll talk about. I take that very seriously. <laughs> as you can I know you love your music, Nina Fawcett. What a wonderful woman. Yeah. Um, I learned quite a lot from her, and I kind of was quite inspired by her by the, the sacrifices that that she made uh, as being a a supportive woman to her. Her family, really. Yeah. Did you know much about her? Did you know about the family before this film? No, I. It's obviously based on a book, so I read the book. And mm. in the book, there's a little bit of information. She was pretty rebellious. She kind of called off an engagement, and there was scandal. And then she fell in love with him, and he was not of kind of noble birth, and she didn't mind. She just she felt very progressive and very contemporary. And they were Buddhist at a time when no one was, and they just sort of. I, I kind of loved how different she seemed, and she was a suffragette. So I'd studied that stuff, but there was not a lot of source material. There were letters they'd written to each other and the book, and that was pretty much it, because women were just not interesting enough to be documented, obviously, in, those, <laughs> in that era. Um, but you could really piece together a sense of who she was and and her frustrations, and I loved how brave she was and how much she sacrificed and how much she held on to hope. and. Mm -hmm. She just sort of broke my heart as a woman. I loved her. The um, the support that she you know she gave her husband, not just kind of you know emotionally and stuff, but but and and for you as an actress to play this character over you know a certain time frame, different parts in her life. Yeah. And I'm not going to go into much detail because I don't want to give anything away with the film. But your your last scene in the film, whew, oh, it's incredible. Little old lady. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh my love, thank you. It's so powerful, and it's like I'm getting chills just thinking oh about it. Oh my actually. god, what, thank you. When you have to kind of go there for for something like that, that's so um, stripped and so pure, I guess as well. Yeah. Is it? Is it? How, how do you do it? How do you? Do you know? It was. Um, I could tell but the script was beautiful, and and she's obviously in and out, and that felt like because it was the ending of the film and because of what she'd been through, it, I wanted to, I really wanted it to be an impactful thing. And the actor that was in the scene with me, I didn't know very well, I'd, he'd been around in another scene. He's mm. amazing, an amazing actor, but there was something that she should be there, but not there. And James, because he's a brilliant director, took the actor out of the scene. So I said those words to no one. And I think it might have been the most brilliant piece of direction ever because she's not present. She's not seeing anything but yeah. this hope. And she's holding onto it with like every thread. And I just I think it I just think I felt such empathy for that kind of courage in mm. a way. But it's not it's hard, you know, you have to <laughs> I don't know. Every now and then you kind of can connect to something and I think it comes from loving the people that you're playing and Yeah. But that that really helped probably his yeah. direction. That's where a great director, you know, comes in. Yeah, so powerful, so good. You didn't have to go into the depths of jungles. I didn't, on this <laughs> but I would have done. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although no, they sounded like that a right laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sailing up the river in in Colombia and all, and all sorts, starving and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, lots of ants and stuff. Yeah, they were starving, though, which <laughs> make, I'm really not good when I'm hungry. <laughs> I remember I played Edie Sedgwick in this film, and you know she was obviously really like a huge junkie and incredibly thin, and I just couldn't quite stop eating on the set. Like, I'll go so far, but don't take my food away. Remove craft services from Sina's yeah, eye line immediately. <laughs> I can't work if I'm hungry. I'm just a cow. What um. When you when you got sent the script for this, was was that how it worked? You got sent the script and you just connected with it. For this particular no, I met. I I think I had a general meeting with James Gray about eight years ago when Brad Pitt was going to play the lead. Mm. We'd had lunch in LA and sort of got along, and he said, "Well, you should just come do this with me." And he's quite maverick in that way. I never had to audition, or yeah. which I still ho often have to do. And then he's loyal, and I was loyal to it, and somebody else was going to do it, and then somebody else was going to do it, and it kind of went through many incarnations and. I was one of the things that stayed attached, um, but it, it just it just kind of happened that way. We yeah. decided we wanted to do something, and this would be it. And Char so worth waiting for then, because Charlie. I know. Oh my God! I know. He's Isn't he brilliant? Unbelievable. Yeah. The so perfect. Perfect and measured and sort of 
yeah, he worked so hard. I don't know that I've, I don't think I ever met Charlie until now. I think he was Percy. We really yeah. didn't, it was so intense and so serious. And he, I don't know, he gave it everything. He, and he's magnificent in it. I said to him that I really hope that David Attenborough sees the film because oh, I think he'll love it. Me too. <laughs> My secret crush. Oh, really? Yeah, I love him. Oh, amazing. He's still but, so handsome as well. Yeah, I just, totally. I just, yeah, any time I'm having a bad day, I, I listen to that voice. My bad is your go-to. These, um, when you look at the, the kind of, the films you've done over the last few years and, and playing real women, whether it be in, you know, Foxcatcher or in American Sniper mm -hmm. and, and in this and stuff, and, and really strong women who are so important to the, um, the structure of, of the, the family unit or the, the life that they are in sort of thing. Is that part of your choices in terms of why you want to take on these roles? I'd love to say that I was in a position where I had my pick of the bunch and I don't, but I feel like the things that I get are probably the things that I'm drawn to because I'm better at doing them. And I think I probably am more interested in in these, in these kinds of roles. and. Uh, I mean, a lot of them are about sacrifice. A lot of them are about being left behind. A lot of them about being are about being undervalued. And maybe thematically, that's something that resonates. Or I don't know. This becomes a therapy session because I've never <laughs> thought about this until this life Sorry. moment. Sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. But I just find that in interviews, I'm like, whoa. I don't know. These are. I think my my goal is to really target the best filmmakers and not be so. Uh, what's the word? Not really give much thought to the size of the role necessarily, but mm -hmm. to make sure that whatever it was that I would kind of, it would be impactful. And also not being objectified in any way, not wearing makeup, norm core, real people. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of, those are the films I like to watch. So they're the films I want to make. Um, that being said, it would be great to like do something that's. Were you surprised as well? Because, you know, I didn't know you could sing, you did cabaret as well. That yeah. must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> that completely, was. you know, completely sort of, you know, different right turn. That adventure. was that was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Was it creatively? Yes. Why? Because I'm like a closet saint. Like it's my it was my dirty <laughs> secret, and suddenly I can be Sally Bowles, who can be kind of not great in moments. It doesn't matter. She's just a nihilistic mm. explosion. And Alan Cumming was the MC, and it was I got to sing and dance on Broadway and not be a trained singer and dancer. I was like <laughs> let out of my box. I was so happy. Um, but it's just, it's the most complete character with the most enormous arc and the music is incredible. I'm not a huge fan of musicals normally. They can, it's like, I'm feeling something like sing about it, you know, <laughs> yeah. which is not my thing, but it's a pretty perfect thing. And the Sam Mendes production, which is what we did was like, was just, you know, flawless. And that discipline, I guess, as well, of being able to revisit that character every night and go, I'm yeah. going to do it a little bit this way tonight or... You know. How dark can I get with this? <laughs> <laughs> you just explore like every possible part of your personality, but the, but even when it's it's exhausting doing a play mm. and it's obviously a live band, so it just it keeps you going. And if you hop on that train, you're just carried. It's pretty amazing. I can see you want yeah. to do more of that. Yes, I'm about to. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. I'm doing Cat on a Hot Tin Roof oh. here in London in the summer. Wow. Which is terrifying. Is it? Yeah. It's good to be terrified, don't it? I guess so, yeah. It's healthy. Yes. Keeps you on your toes. I know. Have you picked a tune yet? Oh, no. We've been chatting. <gasps> Why don't we play something from Crabbery? Um, okay. No, it's okay, quite intense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you could do like... No, we won't do that um, then. We'll... Okay, let me think. Favourite people. Um, Last record you bought or the record you go to the whole, every time? Oh, but I want it to be really good, and I just can't think of what am I listening to always at the moment. Um, okay, The Smiths, Unlovable. Nice. Yeah, we're doing a Smiths week with my daughter. We do an album week. She's singing in the bath, like, unlovable. <laughs> That's in the bath. great. I know. Let's do that. That's a great idea. It's a good song. Introducing her to records at the bath. That's brilliant. Yeah, we did an album a week on the school run, but now we walk to school in New York. So she's, she's like, can do the whole of Pet Sounds. She, sing, she was singing Happiness is Warm Gun at two and a half. I've got it. <laughs> it's amazing. Do you pick the album or does she get any choice in it? No, no choice. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's at two, she's not going to know, but I think a musical education is essential. My dad did it to me. That's great. And it's one of the things I'm most grateful for, actually. I love how film can sometimes do that. I've got two boys, they're three and eight, and oh. so 
my three-year-old is obsessed with ACDC Thunderstruck because it was Amazing. in Planes Too Far and Rescue. Oh, yes. And so he runs around singing, Thunderstruck! And it's the most <laughs> cute, the cutest thing ever, but it's a, such a clever tool for musical. Brilliant. Music within film. Have you seen Moana? I bet yeah, you oh my God, yeah. The you're music. welcome. Yeah, I know, Shane it. <laughs> it's so good. It? All I listen to is that album at the moment. We could have done one of them. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's really, I mean, it's the guy who did Hamilton. Lin yeah. Manuel, have you seen Hamilton? Not yet. It's coming oh. here and it's kind of like, tickets it's, are like 12. Good. Million pounds mm. online, but yeah, I'd love to see it. I'm going to play something from Moana anyway, just because you've mentioned it yeah. as well as the Smiths. Okay, okay. There's the diversity <laughs> of the record collection, Amazing. you see. And listen, it's lovely to see you. You too. And love. congratulations on this. It is a, a really wonderful, wonderful piece of work. Thank, Thank you, you, my love. Thank you. Thank you.